One, two, three, boom! It's mind pump time. Guess what we're giving away today? Free access to Maps Anabolic. Maps Anabolic is the program that started it all, and it's great for building muscle, and uh, it gets people to pop up on the camera, get excited. That was Justin. By the way, he's really handsome, isn't he? It's because he uses Maps Anabolic. It does that to you, too. All right, anyway, here's how you can win access to Maps Anabolic for free. Leave a comment underneath this video in the first 24 hours that we post this video to help us with the algorithm. Make it a good comment, though, because we have to pick your comment in order for you to win. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications so that you know if you won access to that incredible workout program. One more thing before we start this podcast. And by the way, this podcast is going to knock your socks off. That's true. Your socks are going to blow off your feet. It's a true story. Um, we have a sale running right now on two programs and a bundle. So Maps Prime, <laughs> Maps Prime Pro and the Maps Prime Bundle, all 50% off. Go check them out. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just make sure you use the code June Prime with no space for the discount. All right, enjoy the podcast. You know, you ever watch movies and there's like a kid that does magic and he's always the nerd? Oh, I do magic, Trevor. Everybody's like making fun of him. Yeah. Let's mm. be honest. Let's be honest now. You're in your 20s. Okay. Who's most likely to do magic out of the three of us? No, that's not the question. <laughs> to, Justin. I wonder. Sure. <laughs> you look like you'd be the one to do magic. What? Because yeah. you look like you have eyeliner on. Like you look Chris like you have Angel? that face. Yeah. That didn't come till later. Anyway, yeah. think about this. You're in your mid-20s. You go out with your buddies to the bar or at a party. Sounds David Blaine, 100%. The guy that does magic tricks, tell me that's not like one of the easiest ways to get people's attention. <laughs> Yeah, he's just got like a handkerchief randomly. I mean, seriously, honestly. Yeah. That be like a great, it's that and like playing like a piano or something. Like, oh, oh, there's a piano in the house. Let me see that real quick. Yeah. All the girls. I mean, it's it's for the parlor trick stuff. Well, you know what? I actually was interested in it because they know a lot of illusions. And, mm. and it'd be interesting to manipulate people. <laughs> Whoa. Know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like. All, now I know why you watch those cult movies. Yeah. Shows. I feel like they, they use all the same techniques and, and sleight of hand and all that kind of stuff. Stuff. I, I feel like some people are on that level and you don't realize I wonder what the they're per messing with you. What do you think the percentage of, of cult leaders also practiced magician or magic when they were kids? Magi what, do you, what would you call it? Magicry? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's, yeah. I think it's all wrapped into the whole cult thing. Maybe. That's, that's what I think. I could see that, though. I could see like someone as... as talented as david blaine because yeah. i've seen like subliminal messaging and like all this kind of stuff Dude, I, it's all like they together should, they should do a where are they now for that yeah, yeah. you know where like cult leaders where are they now where well, are they now <laughs> well they're dead well like okay <laughs> most of them Dude, yeah. you guys have seen david blaine's uh his david blaine specials right yeah. like some of the stuff he does doesn't make any sense okay. like here cut that orange thank you for bringing like, him up because i did watch his latest thing on youtube and it was about He's got him. a new one? Yeah, well, it was him, basically, he did this for his daughter, which I, you know, it, it's cute or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, he he was basically, like, up with balloons. So he tied himself to, like, all these huge balloons and flew up into the atmosphere and basically, like, released himself from, like, way beyond where planes fly and fell down and basically found his way back through his like parachute back to safety but it was so boring because mm, he's just floating it's just fl like yeah. the whole thing was a setup for him to float and with balloons and i'm like where where's the cool shit that does sound wait, wait, so lame he, he held enough balloons to take him to up float. which is i mean again that's a lot of balloons it's it was crazy for justin yeah, yes it, it was a whole lot of balloons <laughs> so how, how, big huge balloons yeah how many balloons do you think that would take depends who it is that's what i'm I saying mean, I was doug like, we'd give him like four a couple or five. hundred but they were like four or five. they would fill up this whole room you know like a few of them <laughs> doug can't even bring his daughter birthday balloons <laughs> <laughs> I'm floating away. Uh, just just three sir. yeah just three that's yeah. all i can do how many balloons would you like for your daughter's <laughs> birthday <laughs> 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 Yeah, how old is she? How strong uh, are those balloons again? Nine. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. So that one was a flop because he usually does like the really cool stuff where he'll throw a card and all of a sudden it'll land like on the inside of a bus yes. going by or something. Yes. And you're like, what the fuck? So, so the the part that is the coolest of that magic stuff is the street magic. That's always my favorite. The yeah. weird shit, and then the people's reactions is always. There's always the people. There's always the guy that gets so freaked out he runs away. You know what yeah. I, mean? I yeah, love that. Yeah, oh my yeah. god. And he runs I away. know. I know. <laughs> well, yeah. he does that one where he tells you to you know think about somebody who's like really special to you, and then he burns something. Yeah, then he burns, burns it. Yeah, spray burn, paints it. Uh, burns on their forehead. That's what I'm saying. So imagine if you had that ability to do magic like that, yeah. and you wanted to start a cult. Hell easy. Yeah. You're totally right, dude. If I could levitate, I'm getting some some followers. 
first. For sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, because the next level is like, like whoa. Uh, what your, made you your br- wives must be your next What level. made you think about magicians? Where would that come Earlier, out? Earlier, we were talking about magic. I don't remember what you said. Oh. You were singing magic or something like that? Yeah. No, that was in Justin. Was it Justin <laughs> yeah, that was just, singing? Just yeah, but most of these magicians doing the tricks at the bar for the girls, it's super lame. Yeah. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're not doing it, anything cool. No, but I think if you're at a party, a trick like that would be, I don't know. I don't know. I think it'd be cool. No? Mm, no, I'll push throw it shit at you. Wow. Wow, dude. Unless you're David Blaine. <laughs> you're such a dick. I'm just like, get that out of here. It's the same guy that's playing the music on his acoustic guitar and he's like, you know, thinks he's John Mayer. Yeah, you're probably right. Stop it. Uh, I think you're right, man. Yeah, I will smash yeah. that. What's um speaking of stuff on uh, you know, new things that we're watching or what I watched a movie that you recommended a while ago and I can't remember the name of it. It was something about the Wilderman. Oh yeah, the one that that had the Doug, Ricky look Baker. Uh huh. Oh, Ricky Baker. Oh dude, I can't recommend this movie enough. That's it, the same I told guy. You. The same guy who wrote Jojo Rabbit, right? Yeah. Same it guy. was so good. It was hilarious. So underrated. So yeah. good. It yeah. was amazing. I watched it with the whole family. I totally We're... stumbled trying to explain that one to you guys and totally pitched it wrong. But it's yeah, it's amazing. Yes. Yeah, so, you, Doug, who, what, yeah, who uh, have you seen this yet? I haven't. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's something the Wilderman. Maybe. What you are you doing over it? there? Why are you so behind? What's going on over there? I'm He's just making sure everything's recording over here. Oh, that's mm-hmm. probably a good idea. Yeah, there's it's a probably, lot of stuff. Looks a little frazzled over there. Yeah, oh, oh my God. Fra- <laughs> little frazzled dazzle. <laughs> Don't mess with Doug. I got some. <laughs> I, know, I got some here. power here. <laughs> you and you are um, <laughs> your mustard colored jorts over there. I like those. Yeah. Are you? Those are you actually cool? Are you trying to get your legs darker, Doug? Is that why you're wearing shorts? Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. Very I mean, bright in here. Yeah. Yeah. Between I, you and Justin, I, I would light up this whole room. Do you yeah. know what? Do you know what uh, one of those are? Those are those the um, what Viore shorts? These are, those? are core. Those core are shorts. Core, those are the ones you like. Those aren't the same mm. ones as you, right, Justin? Yeah, I like the core. Yeah. Oh, you do. So you know, we we recently hung out this weekend with talking about Viore. Uh, was J- Jesse right? Yeah, Jesse. J- Jesse came out to uh, the trucky spot. Great guy. I love that guy. By the no, way. No. Yeah. No. We hit, yeah, we hit it cool. off. He he rolls up and he's rocking the Viore, ripstop, the ripstop yeah. Viore pants, which I have three pairs of. Those. You never see me wear them though, because I I actually prefer like a tapered bottom. So I, there's pictures of me in my Instagram where we did the mirror talk, and you can see me. Yeah. I tight like roll pegged them. Yeah, right? I do. I used to yeah. peg them because I like I, I I prefer them all you know tight. Boy, does that mean something different these days? I tell you. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Where's uh, your, where, hey, what's Adam doing in there? Oh, your, he's pegging. Yeah. He's pegging his pants. Leave him alone. Wow. Where's, <laughs> where's your mind? It's my intense. Mind. My bad. So homeboy has got his with a, you know, like elastic on the bottom. And I'm like, what Viore pants are those? And then he tells me that he went. So I actually have Jerry track me down a tailor. So I'm going to do, do the same thing. Yeah. And I'm, I've all get, I've already you like a, that. You like the pants to be tight at the ankle. Yeah. I love that was like one of my favorite. So, you know, that obviously that's a style that was around back when we were kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's been many, I mean, most people that are Doug's age and beyond would tell you that uh, <laughs> styles come in and out, right? Like every probably decade or two decades. <laughs> Doug's like, I remember when uh, Wooly Mammoth was a uh, yeah. style. <laughs> yeah. was, we yeah. just wore pelts. Don't, yeah. I mean, no, seriously. Seriously, though, correct me if I'm wrong, Doug. Don't you feel that way? You've been around a little bit. It's all recycled. It is, right? Mm -hmm. It's true. Like, I see see kids now wearing stuff from the 90s. Yeah, mine was like the the big cuffs, like the ones with the dark jeans. Uh, So I was a 50 style kind of, but yeah, yeah. the the peg was the whole thing. They all, I mean, most everything kind of is, most everything's recycled. Now, some things I don't think should be recycled that comes back around. I'm like, oh, that should have stayed back. Yeah, I see the the, the fanny pack, and then here we are in the fanny pack. I see it all over the place now. Do you really? Well, yeah, yeah. in its defense, it has some utility. That's true. Because they carry their drugs in there. Let's be honest. Well, that's, well, that's what people do. Everybody with a family fanny pack is I'm drugs. pretty sure they got either chalk or drugs. <laughs> yeah. That's I mean, it has, some, it has some utility. But anyways, the uh, the you know the, the tight roll jeans thing, like, I'm, so I have an email out to Joe, and we talked maybe a year and a half or so ago about doing some sort of a collaboration with uh, Viore. And so I think this is perfect. The fact that I never even thought of that, uh, I'm going to go get them done myself, but I'll see if I can convince him to. Now, what is it about the tight around the ankle feeling that you like? I don't know if what it is for other people, but I know why I like it. He wants to show off his ankles. Yeah. Well, no, it's your sneakers. Part of it. Right. So like one of my least. (laughs) That makes so much sense. My least favorite style. What the hell is he used to wearing all these million pairs of sneakers? That's right. I get it. Yeah. And then when the, remember when the style of like the big, like Jinko jeans, like that's a waste. (laughs) Can't be a sneaker head and wear Jinkos. That's just like. That's true. That's an oxymoron. You wear wheelies with those, right? So yeah, I want like, so if you're uh, into sneakers, I like the tight roll because it can totally. (laughs) Think of that makes the sneakers pop. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. The only thing I don't like about and they're comfortable. The only thing I don't like about when it's tight around the ankles is if it, if it comes up, then you got to always pull them down and fix them. 
You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, yeah. It'll get a little co- a little higher. Who's going to fix the problem of of wearing shirts and, and the back part of the shirt that rides up every time? Like I just I'm walking around. That's just when you got back, bro. Bro, oh, baby like, got back. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's it just, just pulls up, and I'm like, just, always. That's just you with all hey, that. Here's junk my lower back. Hey, you know maybe what I should sh- highlight it and yeah. get a tattoo. You know what there. they should make for Justin? They should make t-shirts that uh, like like they snap under like like little baby. You know how babies have those clothes? Like my son, he wears a little onesie, so it snaps underneath. Just one that's yeah, like snaps. It'll never. Yeah. Yeah. Untuck. Yeah, uh, that's a good idea. Only actually. problem is when you're ready to do it with the girl, you know, the uh, wife. You pull them down. That's might, it. Might be like one extra step. Yeah. yeah. By the way, that movie was called Hunt for the Wilder People. I want everybody to know that. I know it's a hard Such one to remember. A good movie. So so good. Is yeah, it, it was awesome. Is it relatively new? I don't. It think is. It, and um, it's on. Uh, it's like a year old, maybe. Yeah. A year or two old. I don't even recognize it at I, all. So it, 2016. Oh wow, it's that old. Oh wow. So I would have never watched it. <laughs> I would have never watched it except for Justin brought it up, and yeah. so I said. Let's give it a shot. Is it wilder people or wilder people like wilderness? Maybe wilder people. Yeah. yeah but it was yeah. really, really, really good. Anyways, what, what, back to... Go oh, ahead. sorry. No, sorry. I was going to say, back to style. Mm. I can't wait till they bring down low-rise jeans. I'm The, the high-rise jeans, that there's, I don't like them. Do you guys like them? On chicks or Yeah, girls? I don't yeah. like them. Yeah, I agree. Like they're way up here. It's like, what are you doing? I the low-rise stuff that looked, I thought, a lot better. Yeah. Y- yes and no. I mean, I, I guess it just depends on. I I think different styles look better on different body types, right? So if you if you have like certain looks, I think so. If you have so, what's a, good for the high then? Like if you have a longer butt. Mm. <laughs> oh, you got a long butt. No, I'm serious. If you got a long, if you have a longer You're butt, that long butt. Yeah, if you have a longer butt, uh, you I think LB? It, I think it yeah. looks. I think it looks better to have the high rise jeans. If you have like a small bubbly butt, I think the low rise oh, okay. jeans look better. Mm. It's, just, um, it's just my opinion. I'm not. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm in for the but, form fit. I don't know what that. I mean, that, quality, right? Yeah. That's. I mean, that, don't you guys don't think? I think like certain styles look. I mean, and a good. Uh, if you've never had somebody like like help you like yeah. dress you, they they, they well, what they the high ones look a little like a mom. To me I totally like, like mom jeans yeah i don't yeah. like it yeah, yeah but like then it. they cut the bottom so low well then that's ho- different hoo-haws hanging yeah, out that's, so that's not that's like it's, that's, that's like that. not jeans yeah, though that's shorts dude yeah you're talking yeah about. i'm Slow not talking buff. about shorts uh-huh. yeah and no, i'm talking about the jeans and they're so high i've actually seen them like they're up to here mm. it looks it looks weird and you see this with uh like workout clothes mm-hmm. like they're like way up here and they'll wear like a half shirt but it's like the pants are way up here it's weird yeah it looks weird it's very indecisive yeah yeah pants or is it shirt what is it i don't know i think it's all i think it's all you know maybe Vic can jump in over here like I think it's all about figuring out your body <laughs> Dude, ties and about. like what yeah, right? are they like completely yeah, lost right the now are they lost right? Vicky yeah. low she's, rise or high rise what's what's your deal I like low rise low rise boom okay. and you know what yeah. she's uh, see, she's saying if you got the if you got the tummy, then you tucks want the everything. Trying to tuck it, tucks yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah it keeps it all yeah. tight. It's like spanks on your pants. Yeah, essentially is what the deal. <laughs> spanks. Anyway, hey, I wanted to thank you guys uh, before I forgot uh, forget for coming to the baptism this weekend. Oh, oh yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was good good reason to actually put some nice clothes on. It, yeah, yeah, really special time. It was a really special time having people. And you know, the we just now started having family functions again with you know family and stuff. Yeah, and we speculated this during the whole pandemic. Pandemic. We speculated that when you when we came out of it, we would value time together a little bit differently because we weren't together for a while. And it does. This is like only the second time that my family kind of were, were, you know, my extended family kind of got together. Mm-hmm. And it's it's just I I found myself several times just stopping and looking at everybody yeah. and just feeling so much gratitude. Your family is yeah. very easy to get along with too. Yeah, they're all they're all pretty kid like easy to talk to and, and pretty cool. Oh, so, thank yeah. you. Yeah, they're really, really good people. We're super blessed. But it was a nice it was a nice ceremony. It's a, definitely a special time. I saw, did you get a workout with Father Steve? Dude, afterwards? okay, so I got to tell the story because I, I, blown away with gratitude, right? So we were planning the, the baptism and Jessica goes, hey, do you think Father, so Father Steve is the producer for the Word on Fire company, essentially. Yeah. Word on Fire, Bishop Barron heads that, they're like a big production company. They're huge. They're very busy, and they're based out of Santa Barbara, so it's not like they're near us. It's a, it's a, they have to fly up here. She says, "Do you think Father Steve would come up?" And I'm like, "Oh man, I'm almost embarrassed to ask him because, but okay, I'll, I'll give a shot." So I asked him, and he's like, "Absolutely, I'll be up there." So he actually flew up. This is just for people to know. Flew up just for the the ceremony and for the reception. So I'm super super grateful for that. But anyway, Father Steve is jacked. 
This yeah. dude's a bodybuilder. He's he actually, the buffest priest I've ever seen. He's competed before. He's been working out since he was like 14 years old. Yeah, he's done like three shows. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. when when uh, back when we interviewed Bishop Barron the first time, I remember when we went down, we noticed right away. We're like, what the heck's going on here? This yeah. guy's yeah, yeah, yeah. So he comes up. He does the whole thing. Super cool guy. Very, very intelligent, by the way. At one point, my uncle, this part made me a little bit like I rolled my eyes, but I'm like, whatever. So my uncle is super counter, contrary, whatever the hell you are type of person. So immediately he goes to Father Steve and I knew what he was doing. He was going to have all this religious debate. And sure yeah, enough. Play devil's advocate. Oh, dude, the whole time. Really? Whole, yeah, so afterwards I'm like, ah, uh, Father Steve, I'm sorry like, about sorry. that. He's like, no, it's okay. <laughs> you know, I get it all the time. So we had a good discussion. So I'm like, that's cool. But anyway, I asked him if he'd want to work out afterwards. And he's like, absolutely. So I thought it was super cool. So we came over here, opened up the studio, lifted some weights. He got a crazy pump. He's all, <laughs> yeah. he's all checked out. Yeah. I mean, the first thing he did was deadlift, I'm going to guess. No, 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 no. It, it was honestly, okay, so here's the deal. You guys know as well as I do, when you work out with other very serious, very experienced people, you go to the gym, what do you end up doing? You your end up, thing, yeah, yeah, you respect each other, right? right? You do your thing and then maybe in between sets, you'll say a few words. And then you go do your thing. It was totally like so. That. How, okay, okay uh, tell me how you chose the music selection. Oh yeah. So I first, that must have been yeah, like an awkward moment, you, you right? Can't like, do like, like full satanic. Yeah, metal. I know. Yeah, yeah, right? Can, can I put Sepultura on right <laughs> now, or is that a little weird? One hundred percent. I looked at my yeah, phone dude. and I'm like, what do I put on? Yeah. So I put first. I put '90s alternative. <laughs> okay. Right? All right. And that I, was. I see where you're going. Not there, even though. close. Not even close. Not even close. And we're listening to it, and it's like it's all right, you know. And then I'm like, oh man, I got to switch it. Be the best ever. Are you? You gonna listen to this TV bopper like, shit yeah, all day yeah, or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you start listening to ACDC, everything's cool till Hell's Bells come yeah, on. You're like, no. Yeah. So then I put Rage Against the Machine on, and that worked. pretty Did well. you really? It did. Uh, and he's cute. funny, by the way. He's he he'll tell you straight up, and he doesn't care or whatever. So it was super cool. So we had a great workout. Then I showed him the Viking press because he never used it before. So I was like, "What's this uh, thing? Game oh, changer." Yeah. Yes, and he's like, "This is one of the smoothest machines." And then dropper. we started talking about bodybuilding history and resistance training history. And he brought up some interesting observations. I, I thought this was so cool. He goes, and you know, he's he understands because he's lived in gyms for his whole life. He's been working out forever. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, he goes, Sal, let me ask you this. He goes, name one of the most diverse, integrated, friendly places that you can think about. And I, I didn't know where he was going. So I'm like, um. Gym. And he goes, the weight room. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, you're absolutely right. 100%. If you go to a hardcore gym in the weight room, you'll find people from all walks of life. You'll find people, different nationalities, races, doesn't matter. Beliefs, everything. And everybody's there working out. And we've talked about this before. There's this, uh, this widespread stereotype belief that the weight room is intimidating because everybody's a dick in there, but it's actually the opposite. And he mm -hmm. said the same thing. He goes, you, he goes, when I would first go work out and I'm some skinny kid, I don't know what I'm doing or what. He goes, the friendliest, most helpful people were in there and I fell in love yeah. with the environment. Totally true. Yeah, all the serious people are trying to get better and they and they know the value of it. And so they want to, you know, almost evangelize that to anybody else coming in. Yes, for the first yes. Time. And then we also talked about how, in particular, strength training is this personal growth tool that is unassuming. Like nobody realizes that they're actually going to embark on personal growth when they do it. But right. if you do it long enough, it's like you you have to be growth minded. Lessons of the iron. Yes, totally. So yeah. it was really, really cool. And we're talking about the meditative aspects of it and stuff and just totally nerded out together. Yeah, there's a it. lot of parallels there. Yeah, sure, it, was, sure. it was super pumped. So I'm excited. I can't wait to work out with uh, with Joey. You know, Joey's part of the team and he's the really strong, uh, one, yeah. really big guy too. Yeah, he's yeah. the one I see deadlifting all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we had a lot of fun. So with you guys that. weren't working out on the tonal, huh? So. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Adam sure. got a full workout. Although, in. what'd you think? Yeah, I tried it too. What'd you think? So, uh, I, I don't know if I should come out completely with, like, I, I feel like I Talk should- Talk about the positives first, and then we'll go into- Yeah, yeah. So, I well, first of all, I, I only have done one. So, I did the test, like, kind of figure out, because it, it, there's a lot of cool things about this, by the way. Like, I, I love the idea that they have this, the, the first mode that you get in is basically, they do, uh, like, four or five basic movements- and it's really just to gauge your strength. Yeah. So that so the machine automatically calibrates. I thought that was so valuable. Yeah. yeah this is really cool. Smart. Okay. Another thing that's really cool is because that's a hard thing for people is if, when they first start. And you know this as a trainer. It's like how much do I lift? I don't know what the right amount. That's weighs. right. And like so whatever. And I actually chose uh, a routine from like a strength phase. I actually followed our buddy Paul uh, and did one of his his strength routines. 
and they have like this the variable resistance set up as if it was chains. Oh yeah. So, so the idea was that when I'm when I was benching, it felt like I had chains on. It them. got heavier as yeah, you extended. Yeah. Wow. And then on top of that, another thing I really like is that if like let's say that I was doing a, a set of eight, you get your eight because the machine will adjust to make sure you finish all your reps. So you never guess the wrong weight. So it's not like you go, you know, you put, sometimes you put on the bar like, oh, I have eight reps. This is what I think I can do. And then you get in there and you're like, oh shit, six is all I got. Right. Mm -hmm. You'll complete your eight because the machine will keep lightening up for you to, it feels your tempo. The and, resistance adjusts on the fly. Yeah. And then it has this, I also really liked how it has uh, the release and set. So they have these little buttons on the thumb so I can get in a position uh, right where I want to start with no weight and then I hit the button and then it loads it. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay, so if you're like trying to pick it up to get in position, sometimes it's already- yeah. oh. Or like if you're thinking about getting down- right, like the, doing flies even, I was like yeah. reaching back for it. Right. And that would have been a problem. Oh, I didn't, didn't notice that. Yeah, and then, you, and then when you're done, you hit it and it releases oh, the cool. weight. So that's really cool. Um, now, before I criticize it, I, I think it's only fair that I say that I've only done one routine and I, and I promise I'll do more. But I will say, um, very disappointed in the legs. Uh, in fact, I didn't. I did a full body strength routine, and I had deadlifts and goblet. They called them goblet squats on it, but it was like a goblet lunge mm -hmm. on there. And here's the problem with this machine: is that you have to hold. You're holding these cables. First of all, it only goes up to about 200 pounds. But the 200 pounds feels doesn't feel like 200 pounds. It feels a lot heavier mm -hmm. for sure. But you end up getting an arm and shoulder pump to hold because yeah, you're isometrically yeah just you got to strain yeah you got you got to hold a cable that I uh, that I you know that I put up to like a hundred pounds yeah and so so it, that becomes the weak link yeah is there a barbell attachment for it so there is a bar well there is a bar I don't know if they use that to squat because I didn't that wasn't in my routine so the two leg exercises that I uh, that I was supposed to do in my routine was this what they called a goblet squat but it was like a goblet reverse lunge. And then a deadlift, and uh, the deadlift was way too easy. I it wasn't uh, it wasn't a full enough range of motion because where the cables come up, it's already a good like I don't know foot plus mm -hmm. off the ground, mm -hmm. uh, and then also I couldn't load it very much. So I literally uh, I and then the other thing, another critique, uh, it was I wanted to run a strength program or strength phase since that's kind of what I'm running right now. And it still felt like it reminded me of Orange Theory with the tempo. Just, you know, it starts off with this get your heart rate going, like basic general stretches and get you going. And then it goes in the routine and the rest periods are very short. I mean, you're literally moving to set the machine up every time. There's not like a, there's never a time where I'm like I was sitting and resting for, a, you know, a full mm -hmm. minute. It's yeah. like you were constantly moving. And so it's like cardio pace. Yeah, I was I, by by 15, 10, 15 minutes in, I was drenched in sweat. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's, a, it's supposed to be a strength routine. So I didn't feel like I didn't get at sore at all on my legs. It was didn't even feel like I worked my legs out. My upper body felt good. It was a great upper body pump. Um, so, you know, my and my initial like you know criticism of it is still early until i do some more uh, to i think circle back uh but for thirty five hundred dollars and fifty dollars yeah. a month it's, I, it's I, a real interesting i wonder if if they you've done those like belt um strapped squats, squats. Yeah, yeah 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 i'm wondering if they could evolve that a little bit more and get maybe a lower angle so you could attach That's a belt a around it would be so much ground. better or i don't stand see on a platform yeah, yeah. like a platform uh, yeah. with that because i feel like that would the angle would just be better in terms of if like how not, it pulls if, you if you were not uh i don't i mean i was, I was laugh or was teasing off air with justin i said oh, yeah you know if you're rich and weak it's a pretty cool yeah. machine that's, that's what i said <laughs> yeah. offending everybody who has one by the way it's got a great ui uh, in the you know the user experience oh, is cool. yeah so for, for me because i did use it a little bit it was extremely smooth the way that the resistance adjusts is of in my opinion uh, breakthrough I, i've never used anything that adjusts that well yeah. i've used machines where the negative is heavier than the positive but it's always jerky it's always not smooth yeah they figured that out they figured that out of course the ui i mean very the thing is integrative. Though, the thing is though, at that price point um you can get a full badass prx setup that's okay so here's, I mean, yes that's, it will not this is again we're speaking from position of trainers it's not going to replace a dumbbells adjustable bench barbell no that's still in my opinion the best setup but that's the idea though the idea is that it does replace that that's really what they're trying to well, do well think about the average person yeah, but who, that's only so much range to it yes and think about the average person who knows nothing about resistance training i could see it 
having some value in that. Oh, sense. definitely. No, you if know? you if you if you don't really train legs much and you don't have a, a strong lower half and you are new to exercise and you have limited space and you have lots of money. I see like, cool, you know, I, why not? Now I, I could see this. Yeah. I could see, let's say you have a setup, you have your, your squat rack, you have your bench, your dumbbells, barbell, and you want to add a cable apparatus and you don't have a lot of space and you don't mind the price tag. I could see it being a nice addition because mm -hmm. you could do all your cable exercises on there. No, totally. I mean, yeah. we you, probably the second most used piece of equipment in our gym is our free motion machine. Mm -hmm. But it takes up more space. It's so. massive. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, for that, and I don't... Well, How much is a free motion brand new? Brand new, they're close to Couple 10 grand, grand, right, Doug? Ooh, I, I, boy, new. I don't know that off the top of my oh, head, okay. but we, I'll find out. We got, uh, well, what are you doing over there, guy? Yeah, I think <laughs> like five grand. <laughs> <laughs> <I guess. laughs> yeah, no, they're expensive. I, we bought ours used from somebody, so we got like a really good deal yeah. on ours. But brand yeah, new. so for a cable setup in your house for that price, and you want cables, I, I think it's valuable if you have the other equipment. If you're advanced, I yeah, can see that. Value. I mean, I definitely think that. Um, I mean, I, I well, we're all gym idiots, right? So we fucking love all this stuff. So uh, yeah, you would, I could see me owning that too, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. I've got the PRX set up already. And like you said, go ahead, Doug. I can get a refurbished one for $3,500. Refur see, even that's refurbished. Yeah. Brand right. new, it's a lot more than that. Right, right. And, and they I, take up a lot of I, space. They're super heavy. I believe if I understand this correctly, after you've done the year membership, you still can use the machine. You just don't get the coaching that comes in involved. In oh, so you still mm. have the access to the resistance and all that stuff. Yeah. That's not bad. But, I mean, you're talking about a minimum $4,000 investment, right? $3,500 and then the membership right, for one year. Membership. Now, do they put the upfront on, on monthly fee as well? Can you do it that way also? I don't know. I didn't pay for it. Okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, it just, if you've got the money to spend, you've got limited space, I, I can see doing something like this. Mm -hmm. But I'm extremely disappointed so far in the lower body stuff. Mm -hmm. and, it, and, it, and again, also, it, it, the problem that I had when I was working at Orange Theory was that it, it, the type of training that appeals to is the people that love to do this circuit type of training. And I feel like this is playing right into that also. It's these- That's not resistance training. No, it's this, yeah. well, it's- the, but the thing that's that is better than Orange Theory or these other the other modalities, right? Is that it's the machine at least controls it. You have to do the strength test, and so it'll adjust it and and give mm -hmm. you some good resistance. So I do like that. I like that it's going to push probably people that wouldn't push themselves as much uh, in the strength. But they're still the rest periods are so short. The rest mm -hmm. periods are so short. It's still doing this whole keep it moving like. And then the lower half just kind of whacks. Well, I had a pretty crazy like uh, epiphany. Well. It was definitely something that I've been sort of constructing, but kind of loosely. So my kids have been in gymnastics and I was um, based off of every interview we've done with, with strength conditioning coaches. I was like, uh, I picked up a lot that gymnastics or some kind of martial art or something where it was like a mix of a lot of different movements and really pro proprioceptively based. So, you know, understanding how to control themselves and their oh, body right. and space. Uh, so it's an ideal way to start kids. To so, start. Yeah. And so I've been very team sports guy, like team sports. And so I was getting a little depressed because through this whole COVID and everything else, they've been completely turned off to, to team sports. And this is what kind of drew me back to try and help the high school to kind of spark some, some uh, motivation there again. But uh, we were out at this park and we, we do this every Sunday now where we bring everybody out to this park and we kind of play and throw the ball around and whatnot. And I was playing catch and both boys like literally could throw the ball like like 10 more yards than they, they did before. They were were running with like crazy speed that I hadn't seen before. Like their whole body had changed and, and their athleticism is way better than it used to be. So just like that, dude. I'm serious. What do you attribute to to, to the gymnastics? Gymnastics, because oh, yeah. they're they're working with uh, handstands they're 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 having on the rings they're they're doing front flips back flips so but but you understand how hard like i had to coach every little nuance when i was coaching little league of how to to position their body to be in split stance to to throw back with their with their shoulder all the way back and all this type of stuff and all of a sudden now it's like intuitive like they they get it and well, i was like whoa it this does, is crazy it's not that different than those tricks that i think i remember or i figured out with even with adults right so if i got a client that 
was in their late 40s and they never played sports and they never strength trained before. Um, this is where I, I, I love stability type exercises because what ends up happening when you focus them on stabilizing their body, they have to be more aware of their body and space. It just kind of, it, it, it gets them focused on every part of their body because they have to or they fall over they tip over because they're trying to stabilize it, it teaches the whole yeah. body to communicate and then they then you see the progression yeah. and the, and so i know that we've seen a lot of coaches and trainers harp on that style of training like the, the whole because i i do believe that it, the pendulum swung that way and went crazy but there is a place where, and where i see a tremendous value especially with somebody who's just learning mechanics and trying yeah. to move because it's a, a similar progression you yeah see. i mean there were like gumby before that you know you'd see a lot of loose limbs and in the way that they were running was just very all over the place and it, 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 their body would swing one direction and they try and overcorrect. Mm. And now it's just like, boom, everything's tight and, and controlled and uh, intentional. And I was just like, this is crazy. Like I was like sitting there watching as just a parent and a trainer, like this, like, wow, this is like a transformation. Yeah. We used to say you're in your body or you're not in your body. It's like that body awareness. And if it's funny because if you don't practice movement with your body, it's almost like you don't, you don't have that familiarity. You don't, know how to yeah so people are like i know my body i'm in my body and then you watch a move yeah. and, and it's not doing what they think it's doing or they don't even know what they're supposed to do gymnastics is all i mean uh in martial arts they talk about this so like mm -hmm. you see like jujitsu instructors they'll say oh put your kids in gymnastics you'll see this with taekwondo instructors now you know all athletic trainers it's just really good for teaching and then because when they're young there's like a window of opportunity to learn this. And once you surpass a certain age, mm -hmm. I mean, you can always improve your body awareness, but you'll never be able to accomplish what you did as a kid. It's like those, it's like learning a language. Oh yeah. You know, as a child. Yeah. It's really, well, I'm just starting to see the fruits of it. So it was just, it was exciting because I, yeah, I was hammering these things so many times and it just now clicked. Now That's are the boys, are they going to continue? What's the plan? Yeah, so they're now in in a stage where they can compete with this, I guess. So they do trampoline skills and things that they've learned all these different types of flips and brawnies and whatever the hell you call them. I'm like learning all this stuff, and I'm like, what is this? Like, as long as they don't have ribbons, you know, like, <laughs> like I'll show up. It's fine, you know. Like uh, they'll, they'll do rings and, and what's wrong with like, ribbons, huh? I'm just saying, you know, that's, 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 a, big that's a different guy. level. Like you, you got to have music and you got to be coordinated with anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not into the ribbon thing. <laughs> Throw it in the air and catch what, it. Yeah. So, uh, what what would you say? Because I know uh, Everett is more the youngest. Your youngest son is more like you, right? Yeah. Now, what are you are what are you seeing right now in gymnastics? Is he picking it up as fast or faster than Ethan? Are they kind of equal? Like, what do you? Yeah, seeing? he's he is really strong. Like, he's just really strong and he gets it. But he's really um, stubborn and hard on himself. So, like, he's a lot harder to coach. Uh, for the coaches because he just like you know like let me figure this out you know so, uh, so which I see in myself a lot too which is I was very uncoachable sometimes uh, but Ethan actually I've seen a massive transformation with Ethan the most uh, because I think it was just the lack of strength especially in the upper body uh, it, when when you go to shoot a basketball or when you go to throw a football yeah. it was just this kind of looseness there that would completely uh, ruin uh, the amount of power and output that he was potentially capable of. Now, was this at the baptism when you got, when the, you guys were on the, uh, the grass, throwing the football and stuff? Is that when you were seeing all this? Or was no, it no, that was, that was after uh, that. Okay. But yeah, I mean, they, they, they haven't wanted to play catch with me now. This is a new thing. So oh, th that's, that's so why I'm cool. like, ah. Oh, that's so, sp speaking of which, by the way, I didn't even tell you guys. So my family hasn't seen you guys in person in a while, right? How long has it been since the last time? A year. Was it Vegas? Yeah, no. it was, or Vegas even longer. Like yeah. two or three years? So I, at some point, uh, almost every one of my cousins came over to me and was like, man, everybody looks really good. So everybody was saying how fit you guys, <laughs> yeah. oh, man. That you guys all yeah, look. Thanks, YouTube. Which yeah, is, <laughs> you motivated us. Yeah, which is really, you know, really, it was really nice to hear, you know, from them. So I'm like, yeah. yeah, there you go. Here. We are a fit. Speaking of, speaking of right. uh, a fit and diet and so how's the nutrition going? Are you guys doing anything different or is it stay, staying on the same? I'm just, yeah, I'm just gradually kind of trying to stay as consistent as possible. I mean, there's the, the occasional little hiccup, but I have a lot less these days. So it's, yeah. it's just really uh, it's sticking with sort of uh, more heavy on the protein and the meats and, and cutting out a bit of carbs. Now, have you gotten to the point yet? Because I'm, I'm getting there now, but have you gotten to the point yet where you're having to figure out ways to stave off 
like cravings and hunger. Has mm-hmm. it gotten there yet? Where you're feeling like, oh, he ain't that serious, bro. I- <laughs> <laughs> this, guy, this guy's like, you know, you're resisting really hard and you're we're struggling like, at night. Rrr. Like, what do I do? No, what do I, I do? I'm like an all in or all out guy, dude. Like, I don't, I don't really fuck around with the whole like. Oh, I, no, I just need it. I need that that <laughs> that buttercup. Shut, shut up. <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting there just. So you don't do anything like you like. Okay, I know. I, Adam, I just they're like, oh, shut up. But you know, I just tell myself to shut up. Okay, well, there, that's yeah. a nice tip to give the audience. Yeah. <laughs> tell your face to shut up. You'll Shut be fine. Up, face hole. Sal's, so, trying, Sal's trying to give you a I know, right now, man. Justin's I'm trying to like, come up with some tips. I don't know fucking yeah. uh, So, okay, I'll give you one because right, help so me okay, out. you can either try Justin's method, which is tell your face to shut up, <laughs> or no, here's what I did. So, what, I, well, I'll, what I've done in the past is I'll get like uh, sil- seltzer water mm. and I'll add a little lime, and it usually does a good job. You oh, know what? Man, I, like you know what? I have been doing that uh, to, to cut down my alcohol. So, okay. Yes. There yeah, you thank, go. Thank you. Yeah, for alcohol, he's got to do something. So, here's something for that. So, here's something else I've done. So, the green juice from or Organifi, the, a packet, it's only 30 calories. If you add that to like a gallon of water and ice yeah. and you sip on that, it really does a good job yeah. with the appetite Dude, because it tastes good. good idea. Have you made the popsicles yet? I haven't done the popsicles. I did Damn. that one time for the kids and it actually like, they did, it was indistinguishable. They were like, ooh, this is good. Oh. And then they found out what it was and they were like, meh. Oh, I hate that. Did hate you that. guys, yeah, speaking of Organifi, yeah. did you guys see Ben Greenfield's post with the red juice yet? No, what'd he do? Oh, you haven't seen that? Doug did he put it in his butt? No. He always puts things in his butt. <laughs> no. Everything, everything's up his butt. That's no. Right. This is so true. I swear to God, everything. Yeah. Yeah. He, He's like, Always ends up there. Oh, you drink coffee? Yeah. I put it on my butt. No. Oh, you take supplement? I put it on my butt. Right. Listen to this. Although doing? his the very next story, I do believe it was yeah. his coffee. And then and live on funny Instagram, bringing, bringing that up. Yeah. No, he was using the the red powder as a a meat marinade, like a seasoning what? the meat. Uh, yeah. Go to his I'm Instagram, to Doug, what that would and taste like. look yeah. look back. Maybe I don't know four or five. It was just recently. I'm I know trying to think of how that would taste. That, see if you can, can you, can you find the one I'm talking about right now? Or do you see? So we could like, uh, Oh my God. What else go. did he put in that rub? Ben's, Ben's Instagram is great. Okay. Yeah, there wow. it is right there. Look at this. So he just puts it on as a, as a rub? Look how much he, yeah, like, well, not really as a rub because it was already in the skillet, I believe when he did this, but he dumps a ton on there. Interesting. Uh, I wonder what that tastes like. He says it, it tastes really good. Look at watch watch what he does right here. Because it tastes like what, what? How would you explain the red juice? It's like a berry, it's like a beet. It tastes yeah, like beets. Well, no, but well, it's sweet though. Real sweet. Yeah, yeah it's well, like beets, that sweet beets flavor. Are, beets are sweet. You don't think beets are sweet? Oh, look, he's look like at, wow. Look oh, at all wow. that, right? Yeah, that's a lot. Now, do you think he's le- le- that legit? Tastes good, or do you think he's just trying to come up with a way? Well, to- I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure everyone's yeah. gonna go try it. If it was terrible, he'd call him out on it. I want to try it, but if it doesn't taste good, I'm gonna be real mad. I wasted. I mean, he's. I don't think he would lie. Like that, I mean, he's gonna he's gonna do it. Well, so here's it. he says it tastes fantastic. Here's yeah. the thing about Ben, huh. though he likes he tastes a lot of things and, and says he tastes good that I don't yeah. necessarily agree with. Yeah, he's. But I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna give he's this a, a little shot. advanced with his palate. Let's just put it that. Yeah, way. I'll try. I have still haven't tried your coffee rub. I'm gonna yeah, try that first. That one's a bit. That one I can confirm. And that's interesting. That looked because he looked like he was making like a not almost like a stir fry. Yeah, he he writes on right there, Doug. Maybe Doug can screenshot it and keep it for us. We'll we'll test it out. I just you brought up Organifi and that I just from this was just like two days ago when he did that. I thought, oh, I forgot to tell the guys about that. I thought that was really weird. Yet more uses of it. I would never yeah, have thought. You no, know? no. Mm. I, mean, I mean, I'm interested. I'm interested to try it at least. Weird. Well. Speaking Speaking of weird, uh, they just did a study and they've concluded. I'm, I'm waiting, waiting for Adam to be like, bullshit. <laughs> they, oh, ju- here, oh, here we go. they just did a study and concluded that sperm will survive on Mars. So that's good news. Wait. Yeah. What? Yeah. I'll, re- <laughs> I'll read the. I'll read the. How the, and, and where? I'll read the. the what they how wrote. do they prove it? Right? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's where, what I was waiting for. Where are they entering? I was, yeah. I was just waiting for that. No, it says here that. Let me find it real quick. It says here that a new study published in the journal Science Advances suggests that sperm can survive on Mars for up to 200 years. This means humans could one day reproduce on the Mm. planet. Literally panspermia. And they said that experts previously believed that space radiation would kill sperm. A six-year experiment on the International Space Station, oh, this is how they did it, Mm. showed that mouse sperm survived when exposed to radiation in space and X-rays on Earth. Wow, what are yeah. they going to try? Mighty Mouse. Are huh? they literally thinking about building like a human civilization on Mars? Yeah, sure. Okay, so so I mean they're they're going to try and terraform it too. Watch. So okay, so let's talk about human behavior for a second. Mm. Okay, what has happened every single time? This is, mm. by the way, every single time, yeah. a an empire grows across the planet. Eventually, what ends up happening? 
revolution. Yeah. Every time, right? England comes to the new world. They create their colonies. We tell England to go fuck yourself. Boom, yeah. America, right? Every single country has done this. Could you see Mars doing the same thing? At what point do you think people on Mars would be like, Earth? Fuck yeah. you. I'm going to do what I want. Well, they're going to be a different type of person for sure. Well, mm -hmm. didn't, didn't you bring up that? That's like the number one fear is that is like you get these people over here and then there's nobody who's creating laws or rules and they're like, <laughs> you're going to have a, it's like, why yeah, are West. they thinking about that in terms if they're colonizing? Like, yeah, what kind of government system are going to have there and all that kind of stuff? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like at some point they'll revolt 100%. They'll yeah. be like, no, we're not listening to you. We're going to do what we want mm -hmm. now. And then what is it? We're going to do like a war. Mars yeah. And somebody sort? there wants to be like, like head honcho, you mm -hmm. know, and is like gonna try to try to get everybody on, on. and that'll never work. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you, who's who's gonna? What are you gonna elect? Some asshole that's gonna be like, I'm the fucking sheriff yeah. here. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's, that's what work. ends up happening when that's people are work. around. At some point, somebody Captain says, Mars. "I'm in charge," you know, mm. and then that's what happens. That's well, gonna be weird. Well, man. it's just so weird because it's. I mean, everything is gonna be basically in a bubble there because you can't. It's inhospitable. Like you can't go outside and breathe everything's just like basically oh i just moved from earth into basically now i'm in a bunch of warehouses mm. uh somewhere else that if i step outside i'm gonna die well all right speaking of weird J justin you're gonna love this okay so i just read this article on the big think you guys ever been on bigthink.com really cool website really no. cool article so here's the title of the article u.s navy controls inventions that claim to change the fabric of reality what? This is the U.S. Navy says this. So inventions with revolutionary potential made uh, made by a mysterious aerospace engineer for the U.S. Navy come to light. So the U.S. Navy holds patents for enigmatic inventions by aerospace engineer Dr. Salvatore P.S. So it was a cool name. Oh. He came up with I like how you said that. <laughs> you like yeah. that? Mm. He came up with technology that can engineer reality, devising an ultra fast craft a fusion reactor, and more. A television? And they're saying, well, <laughs> we already have those. Yeah, we already have those. Yeah. And there goes Adam. Not that impressive. While no. mostly theoretical at this point, the inventions could transform energy, space, and military sectors. So now here we go. Let's have some fun with this, Justin. What does so, all that mean? Well, here's what it says. The, the, this is what they, they claim, that they can engineer reality, that the sci-fi designs for use by the U.S. government range from gravitational wave generators and compact fusion reactors to next generation hybrid aerospace underwater crafts with revolutionary propulsion systems and beyond. Remember my theory about yeah, the UFOs? So they're saying basically we have all of this technology. Yes. We're behind this whole thing. Yes. They, Remember what I said? They're claiming this now. Exactly. Finally. Remember I said all these stuff, that was way, our way of flexing? Yeah. Like we're trying to show everybody like, we got this weird so stuff. So we've like already that. been able to create that. You think we've already gone uh, through time yes. and back? I, I don't know about that, but I think that that it's, it's highly plausible that we've that the UFOs that they're releasing the, the videos of these things flying at ridiculous speeds going underwater changing directions doing whatever are actually our technology and this is one more way that we're telling the world you know kind of tongue in cheek like everybody else we're like oh yeah. we don't know what this is by the way we got this weird uh, patents on yeah. stuff that theoretically we could. got fucking alien yes. shit, dude it sounds just like an 8k television is what all but, this <laughs> that's what, what? It's, what? I mean, when you were just when you were just reading the definition Create of your it, own reality. I couldn't get out of thinking of a television. Like, it, I mean, it's just VR. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, yeah. we just created another <laughs> world, just, and it's in VR. That's not the same Please, at all. Dude. That's not at all the same. I thing. mean, go back and read your definition. It sounds like you're describing like a really, really good TV. It's not, but that's not. You're not. You know, manipulating gravity and going. Oh, you say gravity. I just heard reality. No, yeah. Well, yeah. You say, but reality, reality, not like a TV. The fabric of reality. Yeah. yeah. I mean, imagine being the. Okay. Imagine if you were somebody, you know, you know, thousands of years before and you got dropped into today and you looked at a television. Of would course. you not think that's oh, yeah. exactly what that is? Yeah. But what the hell would the military care about that? They're trying to create weapons. You're going to yeah. create a TV. You don't yeah. think they want good TV out there? <laughs> no. <it's> so stupid. <laughs> they want good TV. Shut up, good TV. Hey, speaking of good TV, I got a show for you guys. What I, you got? Uh, shout out to whoever it was, too. I feel so bad when someone. <laughs> shout out to a random person. <laughs> shout out. Shout out to a random person, person but, whatever you by are. By the way, that's not how shout outs work. Yeah. <laughs> hey, real quick, I'm going to thank just throw it in random person. 
person, yeah. random person. You know who you are. Yeah, you know yeah. Who you are. They're Slid watching. Oh my, my god, he's talking about me. Thank you, Adam. I know. Well, Comment I, in the in the comments if you. What know, happens you know who you is are. I I get a lot of them, and then a lot of them are not good. That's and then not every, what happens. Every once in a while, there's weed. A, yeah, there's weed a good one. No, I remember I haven't been smoking weed. Uh, so, anyways, I go and check out this show. It's called uh, Lupin. L U P I N. It's on Netflix. It's another one of those. It was uh, done somewhere else, and then it's it was popular there, and then now it's brought over to the U.S. I thought this, Lupin was a cartoon from oh, back man. in the day. Anyway, sorry. I don't know, but what it gives me, like, the feel, if I were to describe it to someone, uh, imagine if someone took the storyline from Usual Suspects and built, like, a series. Wow. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, yeah, right? Was... Like, the main the, the main character in Usual Suspects. That sounds good. Yeah, right? I, I thought so, too. So, and it's mm-hmm. on Netflix? Mm-hmm. Now, you also said, you I heard, overheard this, you said you were watching, I saw the, the preview for this, and it just looked weird. But it's really high. It's highly ranked on Netflix. It's the one. What's the name of it? Sweet Tooth or the one with the like hybrid? Oh human no, I was or... asking, but I didn't watch that. Oh, you haven't seen it? No. Yeah, does anybody really, here see it? Uh, that looked really weird. It, it does. It's highly ranked though. But sometimes Netflix rankings are like, come on, bro. Yeah, I don't. I don't know about because they put a lot of money into it. Or really? Something. I, I you think imagine. they lie on that? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that how that algorithm works. Because sometimes it feels. I remember when. Remember, I brought it up on the show. When I swear it was like just because of spring break for like high school kids got out, like the yeah. eight of the ten were like these teeny bopper fucking you know yeah, cheesy dude. ass like movies. yeah it is it's called Sweet Tooth it's highly ranked it, it everybody says it's well not everybody Netflix says it's really good I watched the, the <laughs> yeah dude I watched the preview and it's like the CrossFit Journal like, justifying everything yeah you know? like it's like, yeah you guys wrote it yeah <laughs> it's, it's like, like get real scientists it's like in Bill Phillips' supplement review remember that yeah, what was that book dude, that he came yeah, out with yeah yeah. We'll review all the EAS <laughs> supplements just happen to be have, first, second, and third. I have that book still somewhere. Yeah. Brilliant marketing. Yeah, yeah. Tell me that's not the smartest marketing. <laughs> uh, all, but, dude, remember, time. we got to see a, a scary movie while we were in, in trucking. Oh. Like, we, without Adam. We, we tried real hard to pull Adam a quiet in, but place. it wasn't going to happen. Oh, yeah. What did you guys think of that? It was okay. Yeah. It was okay. I liked the premise, but I just felt like it could have gone. In a okay, because direction. there was people that were recommending that when I when I made the claim of Cruella being no. like one of the best, and you guys don't say no, no way. No. So I mean. here's my criteria for scary movies because I think sometimes, uh, not sometimes, a lot of times, look at the rating on that. See, that's what I'm saying. High rating, yeah, sweet tooth. I, I, I might I'm, have to watch I'm, it just for that. I'm gonna try it, let's, but anyway, yeah. Here's the thing with scary movies: a lot of times, the whoever makes them relies heavily on the imagery to frighten you like it's scary scenes and yeah. scary images and and I get that and that's cool but if that's what the whole movie's about no less is more with yes, scary movies I need yeah. to have a good story you want them around the corner but you can't really distinguish what it is yet and yeah. then all of a sudden it's right in your face yeah and, oh, and I want and I want the movie at the end for me to be left like terrified like what like in this one didn't really yeah, do that, like that well. psychologically like damage me yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. like, that's what i'm looking for totally yeah. so, hereditary have... did that to me dude you gotta oh. watch that oh, that no. is fucked oh. up i'll have to get my big boy pants for that yeah, absolutely i want to i'm going to take a, a left turn on you guys right here because i, right. I want to bring this up on the podcast and i need your support along hopefully with our audience's support so um, Are you finally coming out? Yeah, that's what it was. Yes. Not that long I've ago, waiting. it was like uh, I don't know, maybe two months ago uh, when Katrina had her surgery. Maybe it was a little more than that now. Two or three months ago when she had her surgery, and I went to order her flowers. We're in a new place, a uh, new town, so I don't really know a lot of the places. And I found this online uh, floral place. Now I thought it was. Uh, originally in their town, but it's actually like a broker who has all these floral places that work for him. And then you, they build the bouquet and they deliver it to wherever you want it to go. And it's actually really, really cool Mm. now. And it's super affordable. It's like normally when you deliver flowers like that, you're over a hundred bucks for like a dozen roses. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that at all. It was like half the price of what I'm used to paying. And it was incredible service. Now, I personally reached out. I don't do this anymore. Normally, I send somebody on our team to go reach. But I I said, get me a phone call with the CEO of this company because I want want it for us. And I think it's kind of a different type of a a sponsorship that we would do. And by the way, for those that are listening, like we haven't worked anything out yet. 
but I want to do something. Now, what I need from you guys is to one, try it out with your guys' wives and make sure that you oh, guys- easy. I'm in the doghouse. You like now, it. So. That's nice. Yeah. I'm not surprising her now yeah. that you said yeah. the podcast. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, yeah. And for those the people that are listening- I was, yeah, Please I was, pull me out. I was literally going to surprise her, but now, yeah. I, Jessica, <laughs> you're getting flowers. <laughs> well, yeah. well, hopefully you can you're get welcome. it to her before this episode yeah. actually airs so we could still talk about it. But And then our audience, if this is something that they would actually want to do. So that's what I'm looking for to see if this if there's any room for that personally myself i like i like a service like this because i i cannot send enough flowers it's like one of those things that i want to be better about all the time i bet you like oh, getting yeah. flowers too um i'm not against it <laughs> uh, yeah. you know do i admit it it depends on if his tulips or yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, like, i mean i like so i like i like the lines I, as a, I don't know i like the smell of flowers in the house like i just mm -hmm. i'm i'm more smell guy so i like my house smelling fresh like that so i actually try and keep flowers yeah. in the fresh flowers now plus mm -hmm. katrina loves it and it's an excuse to I get like her plants something. in general so i, I like yeah, but it's totally different from what we would ever mess with but i thought maybe you guys are good husbands that you guys would probably want to do something like that for your wives i figure we have a lot of listeners I, I that are probably that. good this husbands. was totally my idea. I was going to yeah, do it surprise so, uh, my wife because yeah, you know she deserves we'll have it. To make sure she doesn't listen. So now she right, thinks more. it's your idea. All right, Good job. All right. So. so we'll see. <laughs> it ruined cool. the whole thing. Yeah. So sorry you're in the doghouse, by the way, Justin. Yeah, you know we'll we'll work through it. No, we'll come back on top. Hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Go check out one of our sponsors, Ned. They have an incredible product called Ned Sleep. Now this thing legit works. It's the most effective natural sleep aid any of us have ever tried. It combines CBD with CBN and other natural cannabinoids that are legal in all 50 states from the hemp plant, but boy, do they work. They also add some botanicals in there to make it really effective. So essentially, you take Ned's sleep about 30 minutes before you go to bed, then you sleep like a rock and you wake up really refreshed. Go check them out. It's a great product. Go to helloned.com forward slash mind pump, and then use the code mind pump for 15% off. All right. Enjoy the rest of the podcast. First question is from La Flinsta. How do I push past a be bench press plateau or any for that matter? Oh, the dreaded strength yeah. plateaus. Uh, what a pain in the ass there. Now, at some point, you're going to hit a plateau and everything because you can't get infinitely stronger, uh, if that were the case. Uh, yeah, which is unfortunate. Unfortunate, yeah. right? Um, but it is a pain in the ass, right? So you, you have a particular goal, you're progressing, and strength doesn't just come on your body on a consistent week-by-week -week basis. It just doesn't work this way. Maybe in the beginning, but eventually you start to hit plateaus and you kind of have to figure out what to do. Um, so I'll tell you one of the easiest ways that I broke past uh, bench press plateau way back in the day, and it's very silly, but it worked really well for me, is I actually moved away from the barbell bench press and I did uh, dumbbell chest press. Mm -hmm. And I did that for, I think I did it for like five weeks and it got really strong with dumbbells. Went back to the barbell, because they're similar enough movements, right? But the dumbbells require more stability. It's a little bit of different activation. And for whatever reason, for me, it got me past the plateau that I was in and I was able to add, I think it like 10 or 15 yeah. pounds to my bench I'll press. I'll piggyback on that and, and say like two, with using a stability ball, uh, is another way to get that leg driving. A lot, a lot of times too, like that was something that um, it took me it took me later on benching to to realize how much more stable and how much more force output I could I could produce by really focusing on that leg drive, but also the stability and security of the shoulder joint itself. And so I feel like a broken record all the time about talking about rotational movements and different things to enhance uh, the overall stability of the shoulder. Mm -hmm. But that's something that I had to work through because I would always always hit a wall eventually, you know, in, in my front delt. And, and that was just something that would limit me in, in my progress. So to answer this best, it, it would be most ideal to know what this person's routine looks like, because there could be like a low hanging fruit here. Totally. Right? Like, so let's say this person is trying to get better at their flat bench, but then they like never do barbell incline bench. And one of the best things that ever brought my overall bench up was getting better at the incline bench. So I would drive in that position. Let's pretend they're doing that all the time, but they never do dumbbells to Sal's point. Then I would put them towards the dumbbell. So knowing what you're, what you're currently doing for the bench press and what you do consistently and then what you tend to miss or not do very consistently is the direction that I would push you. Now, there are some exercises that I also found later on that I, I wouldn't have thought it, that would translate to a better bench. 
Um, heavy weighted dips. Um, getting into dips and, and going really deep and heavy. Uh, really, because a lot of most sticking point for most people is being able to get it out off their chest, right? I mean, most everybody can lower it down to their chest, but it's getting out of that hole and completely being able to lift the weight out of the hole. Uh, doing weighted dips uh, really helped me out with that. I would agree. Uh, mm-hmm. Overhead presses, getting really good at a full range of motion overhead press yeah. is really mm-hmm. good too. And then this is a more advanced technique. And I learned, I've told this story a hundred thousand times, but I, I learned this from one of my trainers. And that was to to practice the bench press every day at sub, you know, uh, sub like at low intensities. So in other words, it would be like let's say fifty percent intensity. So let's say you can bench press one hundred pounds and ten reps is your max. What he did is he would go out and he would do five reps with it uh, and do a few sets every day. He just had a, a lot of practice, but real kind of low to moderate intensity. And I practiced this myself. And this is the first time I broke through uh, three plates was doing that. I, I literally bench pressed, I think it was like five or six days a week at low intensities and just got really, well, really good so at it. There's so many little nuanced things that you can concentrate on too. This is what I'm realizing going through and teaching kids now how to do an actual bench press is, you know, just making a nice tight fist and like gripping the bar properly and finding that position that's ideal for you individually. And then also, you know, pretending that basically you're bending the bar. And so now we're getting, you know, even more stability and control and more muscular tension involved. And so there's just like a lot of little things you can do. And that's why it's beneficial to, to lighten the load, do it with less intensity and really hone in on the technique. Well, to that point, Sal, the priming is a, another great tip too. So somebody who is not priming before they go do their bench and you're spending the first couple sets getting in the groove, you're wasting a lot of energy on your chest and mm-hmm. shoulders trying to find the groove and get into position where if you do a really good job of priming your upper body before you go into bench press, a lot of times you can get right after the heavy weight and you're not, you're not expending a bunch of energy. Next question is from Jessica does what? What are the best hamstring exercises when all you have are dumbbells? Some of the best exercises for hamstrings are when you only have dumbbells. Your Romanian deadlift has to be one of the best hamstring exercises that exists. Mm -hmm. It's phenomenal for size, development, shape of the hamstrings. And it's one that I place near the top, regardless of the equipment that's available to me. I think a lot of people look at the hamstring curl machine and think that that's like a top tier hamstring exercise. Now, I'm not saying it's a bad hamstring exercise. I think it's it's got some value for sure, but I would not place it in the same category as a Romanian deadlift with a barbell or dumbbells. It's just yeah. really works the hamstring through the full range of motion. Now, it doesn't work the, the bicep, the, the leg bicep uh, through a full range of motion, but that's easily substituted. And so what I've done in the past with clients, because I never had a hamstring curl machine in my studio, and I trained a lot of clients. I trained myself. I have really, I, at one point, I had really well-developed hamstrings, and I would do lots of Romanian deadlifts with dumbbells, barbells. I would do good mornings with barbells. And then I would do, if I did any kind of a leg curl, I would do them on a on a physio ball. Yeah, physio I'll, ball. I would do at the end great. of the workout exactly, and I would focus hard on the squeeze. Yeah, have you seen now that they have those little boots that you With can the basically wheel. put? Well, you can put a dumbbell on the back oh, of your yeah. heel. And so th- this has been like a new phenomenon, like that I've seen a lot of people using uh, on Instagram, but which is interesting because then you could still at least do like a standing leg curl with that. But um, yeah, like Sal said, it's honestly like you're not going to get past the the Romanian deadlift. You're going to get your the biggest bang for your buck with that single leg deadlift. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a, w- one of the best exercises I've ever taught a client to, and I think that it's a a, a fundamental movement that we should all try and keep in our routine as we age. I mean, when you talk about the benefits of hip stability and hip strength that- Oh, ankle stability too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you you know, you get everything all the way up the kinetic chain from the ankle up, but I, in particular, like hips, right? I just feel like as we get older, we sit down all day long and we lose the good hip mobility and strength. So a lot of times when we lose the mobility, it's because we're also weak there. And just you having to stabilize mm-hmm. your hips 
and then also load and do a, a deadlift, I just think it's one of the, the most important movements that everybody should do. And you get huge benefits from it. It doesn't take very much weight to blast your hamstring. So for me, that would be one for sure in there. The other one that doesn't require dumbbells or barbells, I forget, what is the name of the, uh, where you hook your ankles around the, like a barbell that's on the ground and then you let your chest fall forward? Oh. What's that called? Gosh. Oh, what is man. There? Oh, There's yeah. a name for that. I can't think of the name yeah, for that. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good It's like a reverse too. hyper kind mm -hmm. of. But it's it, got like a it's got a weird name. It's like a Viking or Roman or something. That, yeah, yeah, I can't think of the that's name. That's hard. Yeah. yeah, no, those are really good. And you know, I saw one of our friends. Doing so you got to put pads under your knees. You yeah. you put your ankle, and then you you. And most people will not be able to. Most do it people without. do the partner that like kind of holds their or legs. a couple of ways. Or you could bands. also do like a stick. You could do like a like a PVC pipe or a stick to walk yourself down and that back. That is a gnarly resistant. exercise. Another thing you could do is actually, I saw one of our friends wrapping bands mm -hmm. underneath their armpits, so it was kind of pulling oh, right. them back up. Yep. So, yeah. or you can use your arms and, and he has like a do push, a push up. up at the back. Yeah, yeah, so there's different ways to regress the exercise because it is a little more advanced. But you want to talk about a blaster on the the hamstrings? Yeah, that'll get you. Um, yeah, because you're going to get the stabilization with that too on the way down. Yeah, and it's a heavy negative. Yeah, I, one of my favorite hamstring workouts is. Uh, uh, Romanian deadlifts with dumbbells, and I do a superset right to physio ball leg curls. Oof. Like, what a great, and you get a great hamstring pump Screams from doing that. Oh, it's, it's, <laughs> oh, yeah. it's one of my favorites. It's Nordic hamstring curl. Oh, there you go. I knew it was something like that. Yeah. Nordic hamstring curl. Yes, yeah, yeah. he's got the band around his chest. Too. There you go. Next question is from Benjamin Love What are some ways to loosen up stiff hips for squats? Stiff hips. This is a stability and mobility issue, right? One of the best exercises, generally speaking, for the hips for squats is a 90-90. A you get into position, you stay tight, try and sit up nice and tall, and then once you can stabilize that, because that alone for a lot of people is going to do a lot of work, once you get good at that, then you can focus on doing what's called internal rotation with the back leg where you're picking up the foot while driving the back knee into the floor. That, generally speaking, is a good movement for most people. Now, if you want something easy and you want to, you know, loosen up the hips for yourself and you don't, you're not looking for like lots of, you know, really good mobility. In other words, <laughs> this is inferior. In other words, this is are, inferior. Are you looking for less results? Yeah. Then you can well, some people, look, some people getting on the floor doing 90-90s are like, let me just... You know, two walks, you know, you know, with a hip circle, that can help yeah, a little bit. Yeah, two walks, leg swings. Yeah, yeah. I can't help but this question, I just can't get the the image of Justin when he did a Friday fitness tip about a month or two ago for this. Oh, uh, remember the twerk? Yes. <laughs> yeah. He walked back that up. That loosens it up. Yeah. I mean, it kind of does, People though. I mean, mind. it kind of will work a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you know? there's something there. But I, yeah, 90-90 is just, uh, I mean, it, and it, there's regressions to the 90-90, which I believe we have on our YouTube channel, too. So if you can't get all the way down in a 90-90 position, you can do it with a bench and, and elevate your uh, your legs that way, and it's a little bit easier. But yeah, to me, 90-90 has been one of the best ways to prime my hips before I go into lifting. Uh, two blocks and leg swings are also... Yeah, and it depends on where your lack of stability lies, too, to, to focus in a little bit more specifically, like what the prime. So if I'm doing, like, I need more lateral stability, uh, like, you know, I could do like a Cossack uh, squat type of warm up. Uh, you know, if I need to address my hip flexor, you know, that's like, you know, keeping my range of motion limited, then I do, a, you know, a kneeling hip flexor stretch, you know, things like that that are a little more specifically needed. But obviously, 90-90 kind of covers the bases. So that's always a good one. I'll give you one that's really good. And it addresses like Sal, if you have an issue getting down on the floor, 90-90, and you want something as good as a 90-90, um, I recently uh, was introduced to the assisted Miguel planes, which I got from uh, Squat University guys. I don't know if you guys have ever done that for, oh my God, that's incredible. Hmm. So it's just, it's the assisted Miguel plane. So you just use like a barbell in front of you. So you have, you can balance, mm -hmm. okay. extend one leg all the way back behind you. And then you, and then you rotate. Yeah, yeah. And then you open the hips up. Yeah. So you're keeping your, your foot pointed oh, straight. That's good. I and like then that. you, and you're, you have the assistance to help to take you through that oh, in, range like that. in range of motion. You connect really hard, then come back over. Oh, I like that. Yeah. You do like five reps on each side and boy, yeah, I, that, I've done it unassisted whoo. and that's like really difficult to maintain balance. That's right. So I, that, and that's why I didn't teach those that often because Miguel playing just stabilizing is hard for the average person, much less trying to get them to open their hips. Yeah. They're, they're assisted Miguel planes. And I saw Squat University get giving it as a, as a tip for somebody who actually was trying to work on a discrepancy in their right to left on their hips. I went and started using it, and I was like, ooh, 
this is pretty sick. So mm. if you don't have the time or it's a, it's a little bit faster than getting down on the 9090, but something as valuable, I'd say. Is I'm going to try those tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, you'll like them. Cool. Next question is from Brandon Lee X. What's your main health concern for the next generation? Boy, you know, mm. besides the one that is just on everybody's minds that we talk about all the time, the obesity epidemic and all the, yeah. the issues that that causes, you know, the, the fertility issues are starting to become uh, really alarming. You know, the, I don't remember what the statistic was, but young men today have the same fertility as old men did, you know, decades ago, like a few decades ago. Uh, women today are losing their fertility at record uh, rates, even young women. This is a, a bit alarming because it's like the canary in the coal mine. Like as you, When you're not healthy, one of the first things that starts to go away is your ability to reproduce. So for men, sperm motility or sperm number starts to go down. Of course, hormones associated with those things start to you know reflect that. With women, they start to be, have much more trouble conceiving and then trouble holding on to a healthy you know birth. This is scary because this has profound uh, potential you know effects in the future. Now, in my opinion, in my strong opinion, this is connected to the health epidemics that we've already been uh, watching. You know, the fact that people are becoming more and more obese, the fact that people are becoming weaker and weaker. This is, by the way, one that we haven't talked about a lot, which is we all know about the obesity epidemic, but we're just starting to realize that what's going along with that hand in hand is this weakness epidemic. Uh, mm -hmm. So like, for example, there was a study that was done where they tested young men, like college men's grip strength. And these, these young men's grip strength was like what you see a 60 year old man in the 1980s, which is, right. that's really, right. that's not very good. Right. And with women, we also saw a, a, you know, a weakening of their strength as well. This is not a good thing. All of this is not a good thing. So I think what's happening is we're just, this is a reflection of how much we've changed our environment. We've made life very easy. Food is very easily accessible. It's not very healthy, but it tastes really damn good. And our microbiomes are being affected by antibiotics and by chemicals that we're constantly exposed to. And so you've got all these different things coming together. And now the scary thing is happening, which is, holy shit, if we stay down this path, I think the last time I read about this, they said something like by 2040 or something like, like, like not that far from now, like a couple, couple decades, we would lose our ability to procreate, which is, that's not cool. Yeah. I think just along those lines, the weakness Part of it is something that I've really started to see more than I'm venturing outside of our bubble. We talk a lot to people that are in the gym and that are pretty focused on improvement and, and weight rift, weight, weight rifting, weight, <laughs> weight rifting. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, that's Scooby. something that they're into. <laughs> Woo, uh, and just getting back into it and realizing that uh, the general public it's they're they're fascinated by uh working out like they have never been taught a lot of the skill of working out and and being in the gym and lifting weights and so there's just to me it's pretty alarming i felt like growing up that was a big part of how you played sports you had to get better in the gym in order to to play better in sports and i just don't see the same drive and the same um appeal that sports used to have which was a, a massive outlet for for this country and i know elsewhere uh to to display your your physical abilities and and i just feel like we've kind of shifted a lot more to video games and uh like professional video games even they're making more than professional athletes now and so it's just interesting to see how the culture shift uh, with with all these types of things that have you know impacted just your average person. Uh, I'm going to be a little less of an alarmist. I don't think we're going to see anything. I don't. I think we're going to be able to reproduce. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, that or science will find a way to fucking fix that. And I also think that we tend to go one way and, and get real extreme, and then we all kind of wake up and come the other direction and overcorrect. Uh, but the thing that I notice, even about myself, uh, the bad habits or behaviors or the things that I've seen. Uh, myself start to pick up and do is that we have evolved to a place where very little movement is required to do anything. Mm -hmm. And it's taking more and more effort to get out and just move, period. I mean, I I'd you have to plan it. Yeah. I would like to say exercise and strength. That's been a problem forever. I mean, most people didn't strength train and exercise forever. But what I what to me is more dangerous or scarier uh, about the future is this how immobile. I mean, the, the way the body works is if you, if you don't use it, you lose it. And so 
I, I'm, I'm worried about the generation coming up. Just we keep making everything so convenient. And to your point about video games and your point about things being delivered to you and stuff like that. I mean, we're, we're heading in this direction where you, you're just not going to move. Yeah. I mean, n not There's just no real incentive to do it. Anymore. Right. Exactly. There's no incentive to really do it other than hopefully that you would still be able to do it, which I don't know if that's enough motivation for the, the generation coming up. So, and I, and I also, again, back to my point, what I see with myself, like we're fitness enthusiasts and I still see how much my behaviors have changed. I mean, I love DoorDash. I use things like that all the time. I have streaming everything now too. And so I don't go out and, and kill my food or pluck or pick my food. Like everything is brought to you. And I mean, I don't even go to the grocery store anymore since COVID and got used to using delivery service. So I've just, and you just start doing these things and you go, oh, this is so cool. And this is so great. But nobody sits down and goes like, oh, you know, in a year's time, on average, I would go to the grocery store, say, you know, 50 times. And in those 50 times, I take X amount of steps, which is X amount of calories. And, and like nobody is factoring that in. Like you've just pruned that off of your life, you know, and that going forward. And, and we just keep doing that. So I, I'm most concerned just about that, the generation coming up just flat out moving. Yeah, along those lines, you know, that the, there's a huge increase in kids uh, with back pain and neck pain, mm -hmm. yeah. going to the doctor. Oh, yeah. And they were blaming it at first on backpacks. In fact, some schools were telling kids, oh, it's to because- To wear in the front and stuff, not, right? Either wear in the front or to, to have those rolling bags because they think that the problem was, it's not the backpacks. No. It's that kids are not strong yeah. oh, they're, and they're not they're moving. They're not, and you're seeing forward head, you're mm -hmm. seeing forward shoulder, you're seeing really bad posture, uh, back pain. You know, I remember- when I first got certified as a trainer, type 2 diabetes wasn't called type 2 diabetes. It was called adult onset diabetes. And that's because only adults got it. So it's something that you developed as an adult through your eating habits and your lifestyle. Well, sometime in the 90s, early 90s, I believe, they changed the name to type 2 diabetes because kids started getting it. Yeah. Well, back pain was that's non-existent for kids for a long time. Like when does a kid, unless a kid hurts themselves, like falls, falls off something, but a kid never went to the doctor for chronic back pain. You're now seeing this, chronic back pain and chronic neck pain. Well, so. you see schools eliminating a lot of their physical education because of the funding or whatever the case is, but there's been a lot less emphasis on physical education and, and outlets, uh, after school programs and things that they could be a part of. And, and I really feel passionate about that. That needs to be a massive priority totally. that, that we shift. They've done such a stupid job with it because A, they didn't value it. And they said, this is not as important as science and math. They did the same thing to music, by the way. Yeah. And now we're finding- Everything has to be cognitive. Yes. And, and what we're finding now is music and activity makes you better at everything else. And they're all they're very, very important. It's all important. intertwined, yeah. And number two- They've systematically taken out some of the most valuable activities and games out of the at a recess and out of PE because they're too competitive or because yeah, somebody feels left out. Or, yes, or so whatever. stupid. Like the stuff that you learn, like the, what you yeah. learn playing games like that is are there important lessons? And yeah. is there a chance these are formative them? years where you're going to have to learn um, these challenges? It's it's better to learn them early than to learn them way later in the workforce and you don't know how to deal with it. Mark my words. The next thing for them to start to remove from schools or test scores. Mark my words. Oh Why? My because some kids get bad scores yeah. and they feel bad and you can't have kids feeling bad because everybody needs to feel the same. Mark my words. It's going to follow the same path that we saw with activity, which is totally ridiculous. And I think that'll be the death uh, of public education because parents are going to be like, that's enough. I'm taking my yeah. kids out. So anyway, look, if you like our content, you like our information, you got to head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our free stuff. We actually put together free information specifically for our audience that you won't find on the podcast, you won't find on YouTube, you'll only find at mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Salon, Adam at Mind Pump Adam. If you find yourself in this state where you're like, I'm kind of losing motivation, I'm losing a little bit of steam, is to change your goals. It's not just changing your goals. I want to be very clear. That's part of it, right? It's your it's, mindset. The mindset's the important thing. Let mm -hmm. me tell you, that is the hardest part of this whole conversation yes. because the, the inevitable 